Doctora Nuslein Bolhart, doctora honoris causa de la UPF, senyora Montserrat Vendrell, presidenta del Consell Social, anterior rector Jaume Casals, professora Laia de Nadal, vicerectora de Transferència de Coneixement, professora Cristina Pujades, professorat, membres de la comunitat universitària, personal de gestió, amigues, amics. Sabem que la doctora Christian Nusley Bolhart té diverses passions i una d'elles és la lead music, la música lead, i per això hem tingut aquestes cançons. We know that you have several passions and one of them is the lead music. That's why we have had these several songs. So I appreciate, we appreciate a lot the singers, the artists and the core, UPF core, for these marvelous songs. Professor Pujadas Laudatio has stressed on many aspects of the Dr. Christian Nusley Bolhart. For example, the scientific accomplishments, her role as a scientific mentor, and her commitment to closing the gender gap. I will focus my speech in this last part. You know that UPF is committed to several key pillars. One of them is that this is an intensive research university. Another is the internationalization. Another is the commitment to culture and humanities. And another is the commitment to planetary well-being. Planetary well-being means the well-being of the planet, of course, but also the well-being of organizations, the well-being of people. And the closing the gender gap is related to this last commitment. And as Professor Pujadas has mentioned, one of the accomplishments of Dr. Christian Nusley Bolhart is the the development development of a foundation, the Christian Nusley Bolhart Foundation, to encourage young female scientists to pursue and to have success in their scientific career. So this means that uh, the honorary doctor we have, to, the new honorary doctor we have at UPF is a scientist, but also a person that, uh, apart from being a great scientist, a person who has devoted her time to, um, to improve the planet, not only with her research, but also with actions like this uh, foundation. UPF uh, has, uh, in uh, biomedical science, we have uh, a proportion of 50-50 uh, uh, female-male students in uh, medicine and biomedicine. But when, uh, this, uh, when we analyze uh, the proportion, when we talk about the researchers that enter in the, this university, the 50-50 proportion uh, changes, and now we have uh, 25 female percentage and 75 uh, percentage for male. So for students, the average is okay, but uh, not for research positions. But in the whole university, the proportion of male and female for students, it's uh, 80% female. Um, I am talking about undergraduate st uh, students, 80% female, 20% uh, male. Probably some of you, many of you know the reason for that, but some of you uh, maybe don't know the reason why for undergrads in the general, in all the courses we have at UPF, why we have 80% female, 20% male. And the reason is that uh, to enter in this university, we use uh, the general system organized by the uh, Catalan government where the grading, the grades, of the previous studies are crucial, so the students with better grades uh, have more possibilities to enter in this university, which uh, is uh, probably the university where it's most difficult to enter. And you know that uh, when uh, female and male have uh, 18 years old, 17 years old, 18 years old, um, male are thinking other things, <laughs> football, soccer, and many other and female are more concentrated in the studies. So probably this is one of the reasons. 
But what is very shocking is that uh, when we analyze what has happened with this percentage along the years, and uh, several times uh, UPF has studied the evolution of this 80% uh, female we have uh, in undergrad and 20% of uh, uh, male, um, we have uh, studied what happens along the years. Okay? And it's, um, it's uh, shocking to see that uh, in the first year of uh, undergrad studies, the performance of f female is very high. The, in the first year, the performance of male is lower. But when we arrive to third year, fourth year, the performance is more similar. When uh, undergrads finish the studies and they are uh, graduated um, and they start working, the difference in performance starts to change. So at the beginning, a female performance is very high, performance of uh, male is very low. During the, the, the career, the performance of female starts to low down in the third year, fourth year, and the performance of male is going up. Uh, and in the, one of the studies I remember, um, prepared by the Social Council of the, of the University, the two key factors of uh, making the uh, performance of female go down and the performance of male go up is the uh, different um, proportion of uh, work at home. Okay? And uh, the, how couples and families uh, distribute their time. So this means a, a, a big problem because many studies demonstrate that uh, an organization and a society is better when there is a gender balance in top levels of organization. Many studies demonstrate that companies, even listed companies in the stock exchange, they have higher profitability when they have a gender balance on top. Higher profitability, higher performance, so many good results. So that's why uh, uh, we think that it's very good uh, what you've done for, uh, with your foundation to try to, to improve the gender balance. Here at UPF, we try to do our best uh, to that, but um, it's, it's very difficult to improve. We have slight improvements, but if we, if we compare our first uh, gender uh, plan, gender balance plan, we started more than 10 years ago. Uh, well, after the, at the end of the first gender equality plan, we had some slight improvements. We have a second uh, gender plan. Now we are about to change, the, to finish that plan. And now we are studying the results and the results are not uh, good enough. So um, it seems that uh, there is a lot of uh, room to do uh, in order to improve this. And uh, as I have mentioned, uh, we are uh, devoted to planetary well-being. And planetary well-being means not only solving economic issues, um, uh, the issues of environment, but also the, this big issue. Because remember, we have 80% uh, of uh, students in the undergrad, undergrad students, but when we see 15 years later, what are they doing? They are not in top positions. So this means that they can, it's more difficult to make a difference in connection with organizations and so on. It's true that um, everybody can make a difference uh, whatever they are, but this is a big problem. That's why um, I congratulate you, not only for your research, but, only, but also for devoting some time to help young uh, women researchers to pursue with their career. Here, um, for example, I have uh, data. Um, if, if we talk about Nobel Prize, mm. from 1901 to uh, 2021, only 58 women have been awarded, 58 out, and 889 men. This means 6%. Uh, At UPF, you are the 18th um, scientist to be, or person to be awarded with the honorary uh, degree of this university. You are the 18th. Uh, out of 18th, the first one was uh, Desmond Tutu. 
and the last one is Angela Davis. And out of uh, 18, we have uh, five honorary doctors. You are the number five. So this means uh, more or less 25%. But there is a lot of uh, work to do also in this field. So I wish that in the coming years we can um, have more improvements in all the issues related to the gender balance. I'm about to finish. So um, it's a great honor for us uh, to have you as a new honorary doctor. It's a, a real a great honor. And that's why we are so happy today. And uh, thank you very much to all of you for attending this event and also to, from, to be with us today. Thank you very much.